Welcome, everybody, our Bishop McNamara people. Pleasure. I think this is, uh, let's see, I know I was wrong last time, our third presentation we've done for you all, I believe. Uh, I believe is the count, so welcome parents, welcome students, welcome counselors, faculty, whoever else is joining us, especially if you're joining us for the first time. Good to meet you. Happy to have you. My name is Matt Carpenter. I'm representing College Aid Pro today. Typically, there's two of us. We always do our best to have two of us on here. My partner in crime, Peg Keo, had a flight to catch today. We have a relatively impromptu leadership meeting in my neck of the woods in Boston here. So she's flying out from Seattle today for to meet for the next couple of days. Sorry you're stuck with just me today. I'm going to do my very best. Take good care of you, though. Let's see, a couple housekeeping things first. Everybody's going to get this recording, so we'll send a follow-up tomorrow. You'll have this recording. You will have the slide deck that accompanies it. And just access to us in whatever capacity you need for any follow-up questions. I love questions. Please, I think this makes for a better presentation if it's interactive. And please throw anything at me that you can possibly think of. It doesn't have to be related to the subject matter at hand. As a matter of fact, we're going to tease the next step a little bit at the end here today. We're also going to tease the or spend a little bit of time on, on maybe the previous step in some ways on either side of this private scholarship part of the equation here. Okay. So again, throw it out there, right? If you've got an offer from a school, it doesn't feel right. You thought you would have got more money, or maybe you're pleasantly surprised. If you get a particular case study, throw it out there, uh, put it in the Q and A. If in any questions you have that are more on the personal side, or you'd rather be or, or not, you can be anonymous in there as well. Feel free to ask anything and everything. Okay, now usually it's we don't take the full hour today. If we have questions and we need it, I am I am on the clock. Okay, I am on the clock here for it. I'm happy to stay as long as as long as we need to. But private scholarships generally are not too comprehensive. It's not like other parts of this process that are a lot more confusing and nuanced and just require us to get a little bit more in the weeds. And I will say, arguably. One of the ways that I can provide the most value today, and this is just anytime we present around private scholarships, is to level set expectations, okay? And it, it, because of all the financial aid that's out there, of all the discounts that are given, about 5 to 7% of that money comes from private scholarships. It's just a very small piece of this overall pie, but it gets so many headlines that we just, we feel obligated to address it and provide is the best recommendations we can around it. But again, a, 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 one of the bigger takeaways today will be, okay, this isn't, it's very unlikely that private scholarships is going to make or break this, how affordable college is going to be for myself as the student or for my kid as the parent, right? That's one thing that it'll be a constant theme that kind of creeps up today as we're working through this. And I think it's an important one just because, again, that's one of the bigger myths out there that, hey, there's all this hidden money out there and you just got to know uh, where to find it type of deal. Like I said, that is more myth than anything else. Okay. So without further ado here, let's jump in. Like I mentioned, we are College Aid Pro and we're trying to end the student loan crisis. We have a pretty gaudy goal here, but that's the bad news or the hard news. The good news is we know how to do it and it's by making good decisions at this stage of the process. As you approach it as families, how we end the student debt crisis is by making good decisions now. So we don't get ourselves in trouble. A little bit later, unfortunately, Peggy, my girl, can't join us right now. And truth be told with Peggy, I don't mind sharing this. She's a diehard boss fan, right? Not too far from you guys. His stomping grounds in New Jersey there. He played in Seattle last night. So she went ahead and took the later flight today. I'm not mad at her for that. She earned it out there. Let's see, if you haven't already set up your MyCap account, okay, mycap.collegeaidpro.com. It's free to create for those of you that, and I know a lot of you have these already, but one of the things that we're going to spend some time on here is talking about scholarships, not only at the private level, but revisiting them at colleges themselves, okay, because it's not too late for some opportunities, specifically for the colleges that you've applied to, you want to put them in there to see how you've done in terms of getting scholarships versus how this school or schools typically does business. So I'll put the link in the chat here. And if, and again, if you haven't created an account, I'd recommend that you do because there's a few times that we'll leverage it today. And you can follow along mycap.collegeaidpro.com. Okay, there we go. And I popped that in the chat there. Okay, so just a very quick review, just to again, level set and talk about 
how financial aid works from a more over, we'll start at a high level and then drill all the way down to private scholarships, right? So financial aid is any type of discount that we're getting from colleges, whether that's need-based financial aid, that's all determined by our income and assets and the information that we've submitted to these schools via the FAFSA and CSS profile and any institutional applications. If our, our dollar amount is lower than the cost of attendance, we're potentially eligible for need-based financial aid. Beautiful thing, free money discounts, typically called grants on these financial aid award letters, which we'll spend a minute talk, talking about as well. Merit-based scholarships, right? Merit-based scholarships is money that is given to the student and typically has nothing to do with the financials of the family, has everything to do with the student's academic profile and that particular college and what they're looking for that particular year. When there's a great fit from their point of view, they don't care about the resources a family has or lack thereof. They want that kid to come to their school. Here's a merit-based scholarship, right? And hopefully that's Matter of fact, I know some of you have had been fortunate enough to get some great merit-based scholarships so far this year and hopefully more to come. The third type of financial aid really is a sexy term for loans, right? Self-help financial aid, but it's really money that's given via these financial aid award letters that is going to have to be paid back. And we're going to spend a minute talking about that today. Again, even though most of that is what we're going to talk about about a month from now, when we come back to really focus on appeals, I want to tease it now because it's still relevant. It's still important. Okay. And this is what I talked about a second ago here. Cost of attendance minus EFC equals need. This is how we determine our need-based financial aid eligibility. Again, I'm flying through this because it's just some review, but I think it's important to tie it in with the main topic for today that is private scholarships, right? So for those of you that aren't eligible for need-based financial aid, or even if you are, the other kind of most common way that we're going to get the most meaningful discounts are scholarships from the colleges themselves, right? So it's all about identifying where are we going to be eligible for merit-based scholarships. Now, for, for most of you, if not all of you, the ship has sailed at this point in terms of the colleges we're going to be applying to, but there's still some relevant information here that I want to unpack and tease and make sure that you guys are keeping in mind before these May 1st deposits are due, right? With few exceptions, and really this only applies at schools in which you've applied early, May 1st is the drop dead date. That's when we got to put in our deposit to these colleges saying we are committing to your school, okay? But there's still some ways that, that we can potentially help ourselves out in terms of merit-based scholarships before then, okay? And I know I'm not sharing my screen here because I'm just diving into our platform. Bear with me for a second. Okay, so this is again, for those of you that have created your accounts here, your this is your home dashboard where the first thing that we're showing you front and center is your EFCs to help determine your need-based financial aid eligibility and scholarship eligibility at any colleges that you've entered into the platform here. Now, merit-based scholarships, here's what I want to focus on. And let me just say, as a matter of fact, why don't you, somebody throw out a couple of schools that you have applied to and you maybe you receive scholarships from or hope to receive scholarships from. If somebody wants to throw a couple of particular colleges into the chat, we can get how they do business from a scholarship standpoint. Okay. So let's look at Let's look at, let's see, we have the Stevens. I'm looking at one here, Stevens Institute of Technology. Okay, so let's drill down into here. They're pretty good traditionally with merit-based scholarships. And we're projecting for this particular student, smart kid, he'd get a $20,000 merit-based scholarship. So there's a couple of things I want to look at here. Now, number one, okay, we can get some intel in terms of the why there. Okay, we see the average GPA, the average test scores at this particular school, in this case, Stevens Institute of Technology. So we can get an idea of where our kid stacks up, and that usually helps us say, okay, I, I get why we're projecting a merit-based scholarship. The other thing that I want you to look at here is in the financial aid dropdown, we're going to have the average scholarship that this particular school gives out. Now, if this is a family that I'm working with, right away, I'm going to tell them, hey, you have some grounds to appeal here because you got less than the average at this particular school. And that $2,265 probably means more to you than it does to Stevens. I'm going to recommend that you appeal to the admissions office, even without having any additional information than that, I would, you have reasonable grounds 
to appeal for additional merit-based scholarships. It doesn't guarantee anything, but we've seen that be effective many times, okay? Penn State University, this is probably a good example of a school that we are not projecting any merit-based scholarships, or if we are, probably not much. Just because Penn State, they are so stinking popular. They are so competitive now. It's an amazing school. Don't get me wrong. My brother used to coach football there. I love Happy Valley, but they, unless you're playing for uh, Coach Franklin, you're probably not getting discounts. Okay. So as we can see here, we're projecting that we're paying full sticker price at Penn State. They just don't do a ton in the way of giving need-based financial aid. And we're also probably, I would be pessimistic about appealing there just because most of the State schools, I'm just going to put one more in here. Most of the state schools, especially the flagship universities, are just very cookie cutter, very black and white. Now, Widener, in some ways, is the opposite end of the spectrum. Very generous with merit-based scholarships, right? We're projecting 36000 for this particular student. Now, again, this is a smart kid, right? Not everybody's going to get this, but we can also see that here's the average, right? Is a little over $30,000 in terms of, um, of merit-based scholarships offered. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm just reading a comment here. Most colleges do require that you accept or decline their offer by first. Many colleges have a wait list, so they want to be able to open up spots if your child will not attend. There you go. I appreciate the additional context there. Okay, so the reason why, again, I just wanted to not completely disregard scholarships from the colleges themselves at this stage of the game, even though it might feel like we're too late, it's really, it's not necessarily at a minimum to think about, can we go back and get more scholarships? Because just as the numbers and the data tells us, there's way more scholarships coming from the colleges themselves than there is private scholarships. And usually our odds of getting them or increasing them are better than, again, going to look for really meaningful scholarships at a more national level, okay? And yet, it, I will spend a minute talking about how we identify which scholarships, uh, private scholarships, I'm assuming this is referring to our, our need-based versus merit-based, but usually the short answer to that is scholarships will really self-identify, and usually one of their, they have their headline bullet points, which are, what are the due dates? What are the requirements? Is it essay or no essay? Are they going to require financial information? Usually if they're going to require financial information, or sometimes they'll just want the EFC from the FAFSA, they'll ask for the SAR student aid report. That probably tells us that it's a, there's a need-based component to that private scholarship, but most of them do a pretty good job of being fairly explicit saying we consider need or we don't consider need when we're dishing out this money. And that's, that is a relevant filter or variable as you're thinking about where to focus your efforts, especially if you're not eligible for any need-based financial aid. So it's a good question. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, so let's talk about, again, ask at hand for private scholarships themselves, some of the who, what, where, when, and how, right? Now, th this is not prescriptive, but I think this works in, in, in a similar method to the admissions process to colleges. And obviously, again, every household is different and every di family dynamic is different. But I think what's fairly common is that th that for families that are completing this process, it's the student that is really in charge of the admissions piece of the puzzle and doing the Common App and coming up with their recommendations and writing their essay, right? Where I think most parents that are involved in some capacity are doing the financial aid applications, are doing the FAFSA, are doing the CSS profile. Obviously, there's exceptions on both sides of the equation there. But I think in terms of standard operating procedure, how we recommend it is that, listen, the kid's got to be responsible for the admissions requirement for these private scholarships. If and when financial information becomes relevant for the household, usually when, if there is, if we do have the option of divide and conquer, usually that's what the parent would own. There is less of this in private scholarships than there is during the standard financial aid application process for colleges. So it's the lift overall should be significantly less, okay? And a lot of what's been used for the admissions process should be able to be repurposed for these private scholarships, okay? What's a realistic expectation, right? What should we be considering a win here as we're approaching this as a family, right? And generally speaking that I say, and this, is, this isn't hard da data, but it's more than just completely anecdotal, having been doing this for almost two decades here, that if the kid puts in 
roughly, let's call it 10 hours of work, okay? I think there's a very reasonable expectation if there, we're efficient there and we are focusing and spending our time in the right places, which I hope helped to help you identify what that is today. They can obtain between a thousand and three thousand dollars, right? Total, which is between, if again, if we look at this 10 hours, between a hundred bucks and three hundred bucks an hour, which hopefully is motivating, right? Is hopefully motivating enough to, for any student to say, hey, I, nobody likes doing this stuff. I don't think any of the students enjoy this and they're probably still a little bit calloused from the admissions process. But if we can spend 10 hours and save ourselves a thousand, three thousand bucks, I think it's worth our efforts. The timing, we're in the thick of it, right? For private scholarship, the timing is about now. So if you haven't started poking around already, I would recommend that you start doing that now. I don't think you've really missed too many opportunities, right? There are some, a smaller percentage of scholarships that apply for underclassmen and maybe a very few that might be due in the fall. But by and large, like you guys are right in the sweet spot right now. But not, but that said, I wouldn't drag your feet too much longer if you haven't kicked the tires on this at all. And again, in terms of how we actually apply, it's going to vary. It's going to vary from one scholarship to the next. Some of them are a piece of cake and no essay and all this. It tends to be that the ones that, that require very little, they get huge volume, as you might expect. So our odds of receiving those just go down. Whereas if they're making us jump through a few more hoops in nature, that's more prohibitive. And that's, and the numbers reflect that. So they're going to get less application. So again, just by a way of odds, those tend to be the ones that are a little bit easier to obtain. Okay. Okay. And I get a couple questions that I'll, that I'll hit on here as we're, as we're going along here, and, but please keep them coming. I appreciate it. Now, if I could give like one, if I could only give one recommendation in terms of how to maximize your odds of getting private scholarships, I would say shop locally, full stop. That is my, that would be my answer. And I wouldn't have to think twice about it. Again, this is where you're fishing in the smallest pond, right? And this is just by odds your best odds of obtaining of obtaining something right now you're locally you're not going to get the these full scholarships for all four years because there's just incredibly few of those that even exist in the private scholarship level and as you can imagine it's like a lottery ticket the amount of applications they get are astronomical so it's just again it's a lottery ticket right i just want to be focused on what might be smaller numbers but again i just want to be fishing in the right place and the right place is certainly locally I don't know, and I imagine there's some school counselors on here that might want to chime in, but I don't know if the school counselors at Bishop McNamara have kind of particular local resource or packet for private scholarships that all Bishop McNamara students can apply to. I've, I, some private schools that, that we work with do not just because of the regional nature, while others do. Okay, so here we go. So you guys are in good shape here where the scholarship bulletin is posted bi-weekly. So if you're not engaging in that yet, now would certainly be the time. But the, another nice thing I think about most students that go to a private school regionally is that you can usually double dip, right? So if there's opportunities through the school, you can throw your hat in the ring for those. And then also for whatever your actual community, even if your child doesn't go to high school there, most communities, you don't have to go to high school there, but so long as you're a resident, you can throw your hat in the ring there. So if that applies to your family, I would also contact the school counselors at your your at, at the public school in, in, in your community to see, again, what is being offered there, right? And again, just by nature here, you see this statistic, which always jumps off the page to me, about 33% of high school seniors will apply for their local scholarship. So you're just in that smaller pool and these organizations are obligated to dish the money out. So just by applying, you got some decent odds here, right? So quickly to pump our own tires here. Now, I won't do it too much because I would never recommend that anybody invest in our platform just, oh, sorry, let me just X out of here, just for our private scholarship search. And I got a question about how are we different than Jocelyn Pearson's scholarship system? What I would say is that private scholarships is Jocelyn's sweet spot. We incorporate it into the platform, but certainly it's not what we hold ourselves out as our sweet spot. And she'll tell you that's all she does. And I think she does an excellent job at it. I think she's more robust than we are in terms of um, obtaining private scholarships. And like I said, again, I wouldn't upgrade to the paid version of our platform just for the private scholarship search engine, even though it's a part of it. 
But this is how it works. And what I would say is after you, again, I would exhaust my offers initially at the local level, and then I'd go look at the state level, right? And we have most private scholarships around the country are built into our platform here. But how I would use it is just to say, hey, I'm a resident of Maryland, okay? And uh, as a result of that, what scholarships am I automatically eligible to apply for? And then maybe you say beyond that, if I know I might like to be an accountant, right? If we're going that route, there's, there is probably something that makes sense for me to apply for kind of on this business track. Now, again, no, most of you, I imagine, don't know what you're going to study or don't know what your kids are going to study yet. But if you have a general direction, that's okay. That's enough to be able to apply for these things, right? And certainly maybe you just go look at a national level too, based on some of these other type of filters. But after I looked at the local level. I would go look at the state level and just scroll here. I'm sure there's plenty of Ravens fans. That might be one to fun to apply for. I bet I bet they get no shortage of applications there, but that's okay. Go check it out and it's 5,000 bucks. So it's nothing to sneeze at there in terms of the in terms of the price point. But it, it, again, I, hopefully that answers your question about how we differ from, from Jocelyn's program, right? Where she'll tell you this is the only thing she does, where we like to think we, we address just about every pain point of this financial aid and scholarship process to our platform. But I would say in terms of the private scholarships, that's not one of our strengths. And you might even say it's one of our weaknesses, but that's by design in the sense that, again, I just don't put a premium on private scholarships because that's the smallest piece of the puzzle when we talk about the entire pie that is scholarships in general and financial aid in general. So give me just one second here as I pull our deck back up. Um, lost our spot. Bear with me one second, everybody. Okay. And then we're not the only platform that has the ability to shop for private scholarships on the state or national level. This is one that we do that we recommend for, we're not, we're not splitting the atom here, but it's something that you might consider if you haven't done this already for the admissions process. But one thing about some of these private, the free private scholarship search engines is that their business model is just to essentially sell your email address, right? So you're going to get smoked with spam. Um, so you might consider using a creating a new email just when you're applying for these private scholarships. And then sometimes that helps too, in terms of if you're tag teaming this student and parent or parents, or if you're a school counselor that's helping students with this, you might consider again, creating a new email. It gives you both visibility into it, right? Hopefully helps with accountability there and staying on track. And also again, we're, we can worry less about our more functioning day-to-day -day emails getting crushed with spam. Okay. It's the same type of thing as the admissions process and the financial aid process where we just want to be as organized as we can possibly be because we don't want to miss deadlines, right? With very few exceptions, the expectation has to be that if we miss a deadline, we can't apply for that scholarship. And again, we're, you guys are in the throes of it right now. So this is when I would start to do, get serious about fact gathering and starting to think about at least identifying ones that are worthy of considering applying to, right? And making sure that you, you, we understand where those deadlines are and what the urgency is. And again, make sure that we're really focused on the ones that might have these 315 deadlines, whereas we know we got some more time before the 5-1 deadlines or, or whatever it happens to be. But now is the time to start getting your ducks in a row. Okay. Yeah, so a question here in terms of for kids who have parents that are built specifically for military service or retired service members, what are what scholarships are available to them? The good news here is that there is a pretty robust amount of scholarships dedicated just for students that are that are the children of service members, right? Whether you disabled service members, active or retired, that's one of the bigger pockets or pools of, of private scholarships. I would 100%, my first place that I would start is to reach out to your VA. If you have a point of contact there specifically, that's who I would, that's who I would reach out to specifically. But it, it, again, whether it's 
through our platform or just plain Googling that particular, each of those boxes that you just mentioned there that you check in this particular household is something that I would Google. And again, you should be able to get pretty quickly honed in on what particular scholarships that you would want to apply to that are that are reserved for folks exactly exactly like yourself. Okay. And then if you haven't already, a lot of these private scholarships are going to require that you complete a FAFSA, right? So if you haven't done it already, it's just another reason. And if you follow along with us or have been following along with us, you've heard us say this probably ad nauseum, but another reason why you'd want to complete your FAFSA and then some of these um, some of the state programs as well require that you complete your FAFSA. A smaller subset of scholarships also require the CA profile, which for those of you that have done it, know that's way more of a beast of a form. But that also usually means that they're larger scholarships. So they are just more and generally means that we have to jump through more hoops with the CS profile being evidence of that. But also just by nature, they are more generous. Scholarships have a larger pool to, to pull from. Okay. Another thing I mentioned, I don't know if it came up yet, but generally speaking, private scholarships are for the first year only. Okay. They are not renewable for four years in the way that just about all merit-based scholarships that the colleges give. If we got a $5,000 scholarship freshman year, we're going to get that all four years so long as the student maintains a minimum GPA. Obviously, you need to read the fine print of any of these offers that you're getting from the colleges, but that's a fair general rule of thumb. Whereas the general rule of thumb on the private scholarship side is just the opposite. They are usually just for the first year. There's exceptions, right? So anytime we see a renewable scholarship, that's a beautiful thing because we take that dollar amount and times it by four. But as we're budgeting out this four-year cost that these colleges, that college is, right, and probably more for some of you folks, but we want to bake that into our kind of overall cost projections that these private scholarships, in most cases, are going to be year one and year one only, okay? Um, okay, so this thing called scholarship displacement, uh, I shouldn't say, a very annoying thing about private scholarships. Now, like I mentioned earlier, most of these colleges want to deposit by May 1st, right? So they are filling up their class. They know that you are committing there. Usually a little bit after that, you're going to get a lot of these colleges are going to say, hey, did you win any local scholarships or any scholarships outside of what we gave you for financial aid? Please itemize them for us. Excuse me. So they're going to do some fact gathering and see if you've got any more discounts outside of what the school gave you. If you did and you share that information with the colleges, a fair amount of them will reduce if you were to receive need-based grants, need-based financial aid will reduce the need-based grants up to the amount that you received from your private scholarship. So let's just say, for example, you received a $10,000 need-based grant from a college. You said, hey, you let them know that we won $5,000 from the local Rotary Club they'll say, great, now that means we can reduce your need-based financial aid that we gave you by $5,000. So it's a pretty ridiculous, not pleasant part that some of these colleges participate in. It's incredibly rare that they'll take away any merit-based scholarships. But if this happens to you, if there is this scholarship displacement, the big takeaway here, and again, I'll spend another minute talking about this in a minute, just in general, is that we always want to appeal that. We always want to fight that, right? Of course, being like, just because we got $5,000 from our local scholarship doesn't mean we didn't need it. We do need it, right? We need every one of those dollars. Even with the need-based grants that you gave us, we still need more than that, right? Even with this $5,000, it's still going to be a stretch for our family, right? We owe it, And not to mention that my kid or me as the student worked their butt off doing what they need to do to obtain this private scholarship. So it is always something that we want to appeal. Again, Every not every college does this, but it's something that we just want to be aware of and prepared for and, and also prepared to fight that with the colleges, right? If and when that happens. And usually if you kick and scream politely, kindly with this, the odds of successfully appealing this are generally pretty good. Okay, but not everybody knows that this is a thing that you can even do. So it's always something that I personally want to flag for folks. 
Okay, now this is it, it, this is just an example of a four-year renewable scholarship. I don't think there's any underclassmen on here. This is for underclassmen folks, so I don't want to float it here. And sorry for even including it. I should have taken it off for knowing this is primarily class 2023 families. Um, but I will say, even though that particular resource won't be relevant for you all, assuming you are class 2023, there's a lot of private scholarships that still exist even when the student is in college. So even when you go off to college next year, that doesn't mean that you should stop poking around for private scholarships outside of what you might have received from the college themselves or what you might have got locally or from the private scholarship sector the previous year. It is not necessarily too late for that. Okay. Okay. Let me show you something. Before we spend a minute talking about appealing, like I said, this is going to be the main kind of area of focus when we come back in a few weeks here. We're just really going to be he heavily focused on appealing. Okay. So <clears throat> the something I would recommend that you take advantage of is that in case you guys haven't noticed already, it's these financial aid offers are pretty hard to translate, right? And a lot of times we don't know, is this just a scholarship offer? Is this my full financial aid offer? Even if it is my full fi financial aid offer, I don't know what's a loan, work study, do I pay that up front? What's a, is this all four years? Is it one year? It You are right to be confused. If you haven't got many of these offers yet or any of these offers yet, most folks are confused even. I've been doing this for a long time. Like I said, I'm still looking at these financial aid offers sometimes going, so what is this family going to have to pay? That's what I'm trying to figure out here. And they do not make it easy. I don't want to be too cynical, but I think that's partly by design. It's just not consumer friendly part of the process as you folks have probably experienced a few, few things that might fit in that category. But here's how we're trying to help you for that piece. Okay. And this thing is live just pretty recently here is that if you upload your financial aid award letter, so when you log into your account, okay, and go to put, I, I know one that I have handy, Fairfield University, sometimes it's a little wonky when I'm sharing my screen, so hopefully it cooperates with me. But you just upload the file in here, and we're going to take the guesswork out of it for you, okay? We were fortunate enough to team up with the arm of the Gates Foundation that has really amazing we're engineers, if, as you would expect. And But this Decide Ed is the name of that branch, and they're trying to help make college more transparent. So, the, so what it does is it takes this offer, and it just helps make it easier for you guys to compare apples to apples. Here's the sticker price at the school. You've got this much in need-based grants. This is money that's based on your income or asset. So it could go up and down from one year to the next. Here's what you got in merit-based scholarships. We feel good that's staying there for all four years. This is what was offered in terms of merit-based, or I'm sorry, in terms of the federal direct student loan. Was a percentage of it subsidized, meaning no interest accrues when the kid's in school. Okay. It was, a, it was at all unsubsidized, meaning interest accrues right away. It's still a great loan program, but it's helpful to be aware of the differences here. And we can manipulate any of these. Maybe we're going to be commuting or maybe our travel expenses are going to be lower. We can manipulate these figures. Maybe we don't want to use the unsubsidized portion. I recommend you do, but, but ultimately it helps us really drive down to our net costs and helps us just really compare apples to apples. But the almost equal, I should probably... You might even say more important is what can, did we get a good award? That's one of the first things that we want to look at. Did we get below their average scholarship? So that's something that we want to look at right away. What are we projecting that you should have got versus what you actually got? Okay. And even if you got a good award, which is something that you can look at in the platform, we still typically recommend appealing, right? And again, I'm not going to do the deep dive here because we're going to be back in a few weeks, but I just want to plant the seed with you all that this is a thing that you can do, that you should do, that you're not wrong for asking. You want to do it in a kind way. You want to do it in a pleasant way, right? You're going to be hopefully having relationships with these folks for four more years. It's a it's a part of doing business, right? And that's what this is. This is a huge business transaction, okay? And there's certainly a method to the madness, and that's what we'll be here to talk about. But for right now, I at least want to let you know that's a thing. Absolutely. Upload your award letters, translate them, and then gut check versus what we were projecting. How'd you do? Because it's very common for schools to under award. I pick on Boston College in my backyard all the time. 
they're, in, they're an amazing institution, don't get me wrong, but they traditionally under award people $10,000. Nobody knows that. And we like to police that to let them know that they should give you $10,000 more than you got. And if you go back and ask this way, they're going to do it. They typically do. Again, I just want to tease that. So a couple of things, I get a couple of questions. How much does the College A Pro platform cost, right? There's the free version for everybody. If you are on free or reduced lunch, it's free for you as well. Just write into us. Just write support at collegeaidpro.com. Say, hey, I saw Matt Carpenter speak at my high school. And he said, if we can't afford the full platform, it's a it's, we would get it for free and you will. That's the scholar option. It's $149 for the year, but you can Bishop McNamara families use just use the coupon code Bishop20 and you get 20% off. The other thing you might consider, at least an option that you have, is if you want to have full access to the platform and meet with somebody on our team. Um, you can do that. You just choose the, uh, let me get back in here. The, within the platform, you can either, it'll either say upgrade or talk to an expert and you can meet with somebody on our team for an hour and have access to the platform for the year for, I think it's 239 with the coupon code, some, something like that. So especially for appeals, some families consider that, right? You can meet with a director of financial aid at Harvard, director of financial aid at MIT. Obviously, those are good institutions, but those particular gentlemen are very good at appeals because they've been on that side of the fence their whole career. So they are pretty good at helping families figure out based on your situation, based on the school, how do you go back and get more money? They can't do it at their own schools, as you might expect, right? Ryan can't do it at Harvard. Josh can't do it at MIT. But anywhere else, they can help you out. Again, if you, and but that, that we can't completely comp, but if you want full access to the platform, and again, and you can't afford the hundred, I think it comes out $120 for with the coupon code. If you can't afford it, just write us, let us know, and we'll get you on there for free. And then everybody obviously has a, access to the free platform. Um, but at a minimum, just continue to, follow along with us, right? We do this all the time. For those of you, actually, we've had a great kind of group of Bishop McNamara that's been pretty consistent and following along with us, but we want to continue to support you and we will, right? We'll be back. Hopefully Peggy will be here next time to talk about appeals in, in a couple of weeks. And then after May 1st, we'll focus on, okay, you know where you're going, you know what it's going to cost, how are you going to pay this bill, right? So that will be focused on, okay, if your family has to borrow, what are the pros and cons of each of your options? How do we figure out which one makes the most sense for us? And how do, how do we execute that? I appreciate the uh, appreciate the kind words. And then let me make sure I just got everything. Most colleges. Okay, scholarship bulletin weekly, make sure bi-weekly, make sure you guys are all paying attention to that. Right. And you're getting some shout outs there, school counselors. We're getting some shout outs. Your people are loving you. And I, yeah, I think that's, it. unless there's any more questions, guys, I think we got the everything. Yeah, and Vicky said, how do you delete school? Yeah, so one of the restrictions for the free v premium version of the, or free version of the platform is you can only put on, put three schools on there and you can't add or subtract. That's just one of the restrictions of the free version. Yeah, great questions, great interaction as usual. We really enjoy working with your community. And like I said, happy to help you continue on the journey. And then tomorrow you will get the slide deck and the and this recording. And like I said, we'll, oh, good call. When will we meet again? I will pull up this information because I already, I know it's already on the, okay, 329. So we have it for 329 at... 12.30 Eastern time. We got a nice cadence here with the 12.30 Eastern time, but 3.29, we'll be talking about all about all about appeals. I wanted to tease it today just because it's probably going to be relevant for some of you before then, but that's still absolutely the sweet spot. And again, you all know where to find us um, for any questions that come up before then. And uh, I think we got everybody. All right, everybody. Yeah, no, I appreciate you tuning in here. Hopefully you guys learned a few things and I look forward to guiding you uh, the rest of the way through the journey. Have a great day.